The Russian military convoy that was destroyed near Rilsk in the Kursk region on the night of August the 9th included servicemen from at least two military units, Military Unit 13140 and Military Unit 72164, writes Astra. It is noted that the exact number of Russian soldiers killed, wounded and missing as a result of this strike by the Ukrainian armed forces is unknown. Relatives exchange contradictory information, which includes the figure of 96 and in some cases 300 killed. However, there is no confirmation of this information. Journalists confirmed the identities of two of the people killed in the column. They are servicemen of military unit 13140, cousins from the Astrakhan region, Nikolai Linkov and Ruslan Gelyazev. Nikolai's mother said that she was able to learn about their deaths because another relative of theirs survived the shelling of the column. According to her, the brothers' bodies were only just brought to Rostov. There was a lot of them. All the hospitals, all the morgues were full. The soldiers of military unit 72164 who survived the attack on the convoy are contacting their relatives from Moscow hospitals and from the forests of the Kursk region, relatives report. Those who were not wounded were sent to positions near Kursk. They do not know their new location. Some of the surviving soldiers fled. Their location is unknown, the publication says. The convoy was allegedly hit by a HIMARS multiple rocket launcher. Let us recall that on the night of August the 9th near Rilsk in the Kursk region, the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed a column of Russian troops. It was noted that more than 10 military trucks with infantry were destroyed. As a result of the strike, the Russian army could lose between 200 and 490 soldiers overnight. This could be one of the largest single losses for the Russian army since the start of a full-scale war. One of the reports said, a report by the U.S. Institute for the Study of War indicated that the column was hit east of Rilsk near the village of Oktya Bruskoy in the Kursk region. It contained 14 covered Ural and Kamaz trucks carrying Russian reserves intended to reinforce Russian troops in the Kursk region. Откуда родом? С Ярославля. Срочно. Срочно. Фамилия, имя, отчество? Дагестанов, Малыгин, Академия. Откуда? Дагестан. Дагестан. Что тут делаешь? Ну, моя книга. Я сам не знаю. Курск это что? Курская область. Это Украина, правильно. Фамилия, имя, отчество? Потрясающий, Никита Антонович. Что тут делаете? Отправили на службу. Срочно? Срочно. Хорошо. Давай, плав Украины. Russian military bloggers claim that Kadyrov's men from the Akhmat unit betrayed Russia and stabbed the Russians in the back, specifically avoiding clashes with the Ukrainian armed forces during the attack on the Kursk region. The Z channel of the former mercenary of the PMC, Wagner, Alex Parker, returns, received information according to which the Kadyrovites knew perfectly well about the offensive of the Ukrainian army and deliberately let them through, having secretly concluded a mutual non-aggression pact communicating through the intermediary Kusein Zambetov, who fought for the armed forces of Ukraine but later returned to Chechnya. 
Kadyrov's men understood the balance of power and did not want to lose their fighters by simply allowing the Ukrainian armed forces to penetrate deep into Russia. The puzzle has come together, writes a Russian military propagandist accusing Kadyrov of betraying Russia. Over the past few days, Russian media have been actively accusing Kadyrovites units of fleeing the border. They did not engage in combat but simply abandoned their positions. Earlier, Z War correspondent Kotenok told the truth about the battles of Kadyrov's TikTokers against the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kursk region. Kotenok confirmed on his social network page that the Kadyrovites did not take part in the battles but fled shamefully. He also writes that the breakthrough was made from three directions. At present, the Ukrainian armed forces successfully advanced further in the Kursk region, this time towards the Belovsky district of this region. The media reported fighting to the south of the Sudza district. On this wave, there were also reports of fighting in the Krasnoyarsk district. At the moment, they have not been confirmed. Such tactics would be logical for the Ukrainian troops, bypassing the problematic area where the greatest attention is concentrated, entering through forest belts and tracts into a non-media area with the same characteristic problems as in the Sudza and Koronev districts, one of the pro-Russian government Z channels Rybar reports. It is also noted that in favor of such tactics on the part of the Ukrainian armed forces, this would force them to pull back some of the efforts of the fire brigades from Sudza and Korenevo.